A bunch of major iPhone 15 leaks just dropped, and we're gonna talk about them all. What's up, I'm Royce and this is Apple Next where I talk about all the latest and hottest Apple news of the week. So if that sounds good to you, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and make sure to stay tuned until the end of this video because we got a lot of juicy iPhone 15 related stuff to talk about. First up, it looks like the iPhone 15 is gonna come in some new colors. Yes, yeah, so this is always exciting because with every iPhone release, usually there's a new color that comes along with it for the regular versions and for the pro models. Y'all remember the gold era? Everything was gold, everything had to be gold. Then there was rose gold, everybody was going crazy over it. And then they dropped the iPhone 5C, which brought all the super colorful colors. Everyone thought it was so fun. And then finally it was like, oh, Apple's fun again, yeah. And looking back at last year, the iPhone 14 Pro got that new like dark purple color too, which was really nice. And even though it came a little later, even the regular iPhone 14 got a new yellow color. I think it was like for like their spring marketing campaign. And this year's gonna be no different with the iPhone 15 and the 15 Plus getting what seems to be a mint green color, which if this is the case, it's not really a new color. We had similar color to this on the iPhone 11 and 12. So they're really kind of just bringing it back because for whatever reason for the 13 and 14 they got rid of it so for them to bring it back that probably means that people really like this color so with the iPhone 15 Pro models they're gonna get like a darker red or they call it a crimson color and that usually kind of is the trend it's like the darker shades are usually reserved for the Pro models and then like the lighter fun shades are for the regular models because Pro means dark and serious but it looks like Apple's testing some other colors as well for the regular iPhone 15s, like a light blue and a pink. And I'm always curious to know what kind of like what those testings are like, or like what are they looking for when they're trying out these new colors? Like, are they bringing people in and being like, ah, nah, I ain't feeling that. Oh ooh, yeah, that, that one's cool. And they're like, okay, cool. We're gonna go with that color. Or are they kind of like looking at the market seeing what colors have worked for them in the past, seeing what colors are working for, you know, other competitors. Cause as we know, the color of the iPhone could determine whether one you upgrade, maybe you have a phone, you're happy with it, but then you see that the newer one is in this color you really wanted all along. You're like, oh, you know what? I gotta upgrade just to get that. But even though I'm gonna put a case on it, it's not gonna matter because <laughs> you're not gonna see the color anyway. Or maybe you have a phone in a different operating system. You're like, oh, but wait, but the iPhone's in that color though? Oh, okay, hold on. I might just need to switch at least for this year. I'm just glad we moved past the gold era. Let me know what you guys think of these new colors. Are you excited for any of them? Are there colors that Apple hasn't done yet that you would love to see them do in a future iPhone model? Let me know. And along with some new colors, it looks like the iPhone 15s are going to be getting a bigger battery and more storage for at least the base model. And we can all agree, along with having a cool color for your phone, that having better battery life and more storage for all the photos that you take is extremely important. And thankfully, this isn't going to be just an upgrade where they increase the battery sizes of the Pro models or anything like that. It looks like all the iPhone 15 models are going to get a better battery across the board, the 15, 15 Plus, 15 Pro, and 15 Pro Max. And it seems like it's gonna be a pretty interesting bump with what seems to be like a between a 300 milliamp increase. We don't care about the numbers, all right? It's just, it's gonna be better probably about like what, maybe a 10, 15% bump. When you pair that battery improvement with the new A17 chip that the iPhone 15s are getting that's supposed to greatly improve energy efficiency, and performance, I think we're gonna see some noticeable improvements when it does come to battery life. And that's also assuming that iOS 17 is actually going to be released along with these phones in a decent shape because we have experienced in the past with iPhones that we've gotten better battery life, we've gotten bigger batteries, all that good stuff. We've gotten, the chips were supposed to be great, but the software itself uh, wasn't running really well. It usually takes a couple updates for it to kind of like get up to par, which is why a lot of people don't even like upgrading to the new software like right out the gate they usually wait like a month or two waiting for that like point one update to really you know make that jump so hopefully if all that stuff comes together and we're good it looks like we're going to be in pretty good shape with this iphone 15 release and as i mentioned it looks like apple's going to be improving the storage space of the base model iphone 15s where instead of starting at 128 gigs like it is now the base model is now gonna start at 256 gigs. On one end, that's great because obviously as tech improves, especially like with cameras, higher resolution, more pixels, especially with the iPhone 15. Now the regular ones even getting that 48 megapixel that's in the iPhone 14 Pros, you know, we're all gonna be taking way better photos. So having more storage is great. The downside is we're not sure if that 256 gig model is going to retain the same base price as the 128 gig model. They may just keep the same price that you pay to upgrade to the 256 gig model, which at that point it's like, okay, you're not really introducing this as like the new base model. You're just making us pay as if we were paying for more storage. We'll have to wait and see for sure on that, but hopefully that's not the case because that would suck. And that really would mean a lot. 
you know, the more storage we can get um, at the introductory uh, price point, uh, I feel like, you know, that just benefits everybody. But can we just take a moment to uh, remember the time where eight gigabytes was the base storage on an iPhone? What, are, what were we doing with that? And then upgrading to 16 gigs? Woo, buddy, we were killing the game. All 10 of our photos, let's go, shooting in 720p. And next up, we got another look of what we can expect the iPhone 15 Pro to look like. And this leak comes with another video, but not of a dummy iPhone 15 Pro Max model, but this seems to be a legit phone case for the iPhone 15 Pro Max. And at first glance, you're like, oh, okay, cool, whoop, a phone case, whatever. But if you take a closer look and look at some of the details, one, the first thing that stood out to me was that bigger camera bump, that's definitely noticeable. And that goes along with what we've heard so far about the lenses getting a little bit bigger, and especially if they're fitting in that Periscope lens, in there on the Pro Max and it's just for that model, it would make sense that the camera bump would be noticeably bigger as it is on this phone case. And if we look at the bottom of the case, we do see a wider cutout than normal, which, you know, indicates that USB-C is coming. I feel like out of everything we've talked about, USB-C seems to be the, the most concrete, secure thing that's going to be happening with these new models. And so it would make sense that, you know, they would need a little bit more room to make that happen. And where things get really interesting is when we look at the side of this case, where the volume buttons and the mute switch button would be. And there's a lot of space specifically for the volume button area. And you might just think like, oh, okay, well, you know, that's just to make room for them. But usually, you know, most cases will kind of like block off that area or add like their own little button sides to protect your volume buttons. Like for example, with my iPhone 13 mini case, this is actual Apple branded case. It's a little jacked up, but you can see that like these are covered and like the space for the mute switch button, that's still open. But I feel like for a lot of cases, they do kind of try to protect those buttons. This could be nothing or this could reveal that a reason that they would want to expose the volume button area is to make room for a capacitive touch volume and action button on the side. And pretty much what that means is the button would work in a similar manner as the touch screen on your actual phone and how it registers inputs when you touch it with your finger and it knows whether you're, you're doing a quick tap or a long hold or things like that. So the button would have different features like you'd be able to control how fast the volume goes up and down based off of the amount of pressure you're applying to the button. Or instead of pressing, you could just slide up and down to control the volume as well. Now we've kind of heard that this feature may be coming to this reported action button, which would take place of the mute and switch button where you could perform different actions based off of a quick press, a long hold, a double tap, triple tap, things like that to open different apps. But it seemed like that wasn't going to be the case with the volume buttons as well. Cause it seemed like Apple was actually having issues getting those made. So if they found a way to figure that out and we're gonna get some capacitive touch buttons for both the mute switch and the volume buttons, that's gonna be pretty cool. And if that is the case, I'm sure that'll just be a pro model feature uh, to kind of like help designate between, you know, the regular 15, 15 plus, and then the pro and the pro max. So yeah, this whole thing kind of makes me think that Apple may have a couple more surprises up their sleeves once they actually announce these phones. And next up, it looks like this one iPhone 15 model has been canceled. And the model I'm talking about is the speculated iPhone 15 Ultra. And you guys have probably heard me say that name on the channel before because it was once believed that the Ultra name, iPhone 15 Ultra, was actually going to take place of the iPhone Pro Max name to kind of make things a little bit easier to say, which I was all on board for because Pro Max, is that's just a lot of stuff to say. So it seemed like it was gonna be the 15 Pro and then the 15 Ultra. But then things got flipped and it looked like the Pro Max was gonna be here to stay and that the Ultra was actually gonna be a whole new phone model on its own. So you're telling me Apple was planning on making a iPhone 15, a 15 Plus, a 15 Pro, 15 Pro Max, and then a 15 Ultra? That's too many phones, man, that's too many choices. And the only thing that could make sense in that regard is if like, there's a big stir on with this 15 Pro Max, if it's going to have certain features that the regular Pro doesn't, because then that means if people just want a smaller version of the Pro, but want all the features, they can't do that. And in the past, that's been the case where both Pro models, no matter the size, had the same functions. So for me, it makes sense if they want to introduce some newer uh, features that could only be made possible through a bigger phone, a specific model of a phone, but then they also don't want to kind of like push away people, you know, who just may just want the smaller Pro, then it's like, okay, we'll put out the Pro and the Pro Max that do a lot of cool stuff and they all do the same thing. 
And then we have the regular 15 and 15 plus who, for people who don't really care about having all the best features, but still want a nice phone. And then we'll have the 15 ultra, which is the ultimate iPhone experience with all the latest and coolest gear and tech and whatever. But even that is a stretch, especially hearing that these phones are all going to be getting a price increase this year. So now you're telling me these phones are not only getting more expensive, you're also introducing a even, even more expensive model. <laughs> and when you max out like a Pro Max, like you're pretty much spending like uh, on the cusp of $2,000. So now how much am I spending for this Ultra model if it's a brand new one? Because clearly the Ultra is supposed to be more Pro than the Pros. So now what, we're looking at a $23, $2,500 phone. And then a couple months later, you're trying to throw this Apple Vision Pro at us for $3,400? Nah, it just seems a little bit too wild for me. On the flip side though, it looks like what's probably gonna end up happening is that this Ultra model probably won't come out this year and they'll stick with the Pro Max and then it'll be reserved for next year. And we'll probably then see the Ultra naming take place of the Pro Max naming. So in that case, I actually kind of do hope that this model is canceled because that's just doing too much. Let me know what you guys think. Would you actually be excited to see a dedicated iPhone Ultra model that has some really cool stuff that's only for like people who wanna spend the most and get the best. And lastly, it looks like the iPhone 15 is looking to be one of Apple's biggest releases ever. It's been put out that Apple has put out a lot of orders for these iPhone 15 models because they believe that demand is going to be really strong this year. And they believe it's gonna be so strong that they've ordered 100% more parts than they did for the iPhone 14 release. 100%? What? <laughs> and the iPhone 15 Pro model specifically being 58% of that 100% order. <laughs> so yeah, it looks like Apple's not gonna be caught off guard because there was an issue with the iPhone 14 Pro release last year where they actually didn't make enough of them because they didn't think demand was gonna be as big as it was, which at this point, you know, we should just assume that demand's gonna be big because we all complain about the prices of the phones in general, especially the Pro models, but every time the phone comes out, People who have no business getting the pros, all of a sudden they're the ones who have the pros. <laughs> they're not gonna be caught off guard. They're gonna be ready for both the regular iPhone 15s and the 15 pros, which leads me to believe again, that they got to have something else up their sleeve that is not making its way through the rumor cracks. We got the new colors, USB-C is coming, the new Periscope camera. And while we're all talking about that, bam, they're gonna drop some other like big feature that we never saw coming. And that's all the Apple news I got for the day. I'll catch y'all in the next one.